Last month I did a video on submerged megalithic structures in Brittany, France, because I was surprised to see that the amount of underwater Neolithic monuments is almost as impressive as the sheer volume of them on land. Brittany was an absolute hive of activity during the Neolithic and is even home to the tallest men here ever to be found in Europe. But sea level changes during the Holocene mean that a lot of sites sit partially or completely underwater. And Brittany isn't the only place with underwater archaeology resulting from sea level change. You might remember the submerged megastructure found in the Baltic Sea that dates back to around 10,000 years ago. This week, a new study came out examining a 120 meter Mesolithic wall and several other structures submerged of the Ile de Seine in Brittany. When exactly were these structures built and what were they for? Stay with me to find out. Brittany is home to the Karnak alignments, which are made up of thousands of standing stones, the original purpose of which is unknown. Many stone alignments, stone circles, passage tombs, dolmens, and other megalithic structures can be found throughout the region. There's also evidence for the reuse and remodeling of sites, with one former stone alignment having been erected over a mesolithic hut. Several late Mesolithic shell middens have also been found along the current coastline. So the area has a long history, but the transition from the Mesolithic, when hunter-gatherers there had a mostly maritime diet, to the Neolithic, when the megalithic monuments were built, took place between 5500 and 5000 BCE, the timeline we are looking at with this latest discovery. This new study can currently be viewed in HAL Open Science and is due to be published in the International Journal of Nautical Archaeology. The story started in 2017 when retired geologist Yves Fouquet carried out a morph tectonic analysis of LIDAR data and noticed structures on the ocean floor of the Ile de Seine or Seine Island. From 2022 to 2024, archaeologists then examined the site and confirmed that human-made granite structures were indeed present there at depths of 9 metres under the water. Since 10,000 years ago, relative sea level has risen by about 25 metres in western France, albeit not uniformly with the most rapid changes having taken place over the first 2000 years following the last glacial period. This means that a lot of land became submerged during the Mesolithic and Neolithic periods. Although much work has been done on submerged prehistoric sites in Brittany, until this recent discovery, no archeological sites had been noted off the coast of Seine Island or its neighboring mainland. On the island itself, the earliest structures date to the Middle Neolithic, and on the nearby mainland, several Mesolithic sites have been found on the edge of the cliffs. Eight field operations were carried out between 2022 and 2024, which amounted to 59 dives at the site in total. Four structures labeled as TAF1, TAF2A, TAF2B, and TAF3 were identified 1.9 kilometers west of Seine Island and covering a distance of 600 meters. Tool Arfot 1, or TAF1, which is short for that, is a 120 meter long granite wall oriented east-west, which closes off the upper section of a valley oriented northwest-southeast. Its width varies along its length, averaging 20.9 metres, and its height ranges between 2.1 metres in the north and 1.4 metres in the south. So this is a huge structure. It's made up of two sections, a 90 metre long part labelled as TAF1A that forms a barrier between the two sides of a valley and whose underwater depth varies between 6.5 and 7.1 metres, and a 40 metre long part TAF1B that sits at depths ranging between 5.7 and 6 metres. Structures TAF2A and TAF2B are 90 metres to the northwest of TAF1 and sit at the southern end of a 100 meter wide valley, which is oriented northwest southeast. TAF2A acts as a barrier for 50 meters of the valley and varies in height between 0.8 and 2 meters. Its width ranges between 6 and 16 meters. TAF2B forms a 29 degree angle with TAF2A and stretches for 50 meters to the southwest. It also partially bars the valley. 
TAF3 is 330 meters to the east of TAF1 and is 80 meters in length. It's oriented east-west and also acts as a barrier, but for an elongated depression rather than a valley. Its height varies between 0.3 and 1.7 meters, and its width ranges between 10 and 23 meters. Around 300 meters east of TAF3, there are five stone structures that have been labeled as YAG1, 2, 3A, 3B, and 3C. YAG1 and YAG2 sit on the western and eastern edges of a northwest southeast oriented valley, respectively. YAG3A and YAG3B sit inside this valley, blocking it off at different depths. YAG3B forms a dam measuring 48 meters in length with a width of 10 meters. YAG3C is around 40 meters west of YAG3B and is perpendicular to the slope on the western flank of the valley. All of these five structures have characteristics that suggest they were fish weirs. Fish weirs were common during the Mesolithic and have been found in Ireland, Denmark and Germany. They've also been found in intertidal areas in Brittany and Normandy by analyzing aerial photographs and satellite images. TAF1 is made up of four types of blocks, monoliths, large slabs, small slabs, and boulders. TAF2A is also made of blocks reinforced by monoliths. And this is interesting because there are no similar structures to the TAF features at these depths in Western France, and such construction techniques can be considered as complex. Fish weirs found on the Molen archipelago 40 kilometers to the north have architectural similarities but are much smaller. Since TAF1 and TAF3 are dams joined to rocky outcrops, they do bear a resemblance to fish weirs classified as type A and type B, albeit much larger. TAF2A and TAF2B are supported only at one end, which classifies them as type D. However, such weirs are only found in sedimentary environments, which is not the case here. The TAF structures are not that eroded given the hydrodynamic conditions and many storms they will have experienced over the years. Even the monoliths are still vertical, which does suggest that they are firmly anchored, potentially at their base, meaning they could stand as high as three meters. These monoliths have not been sampled, but their morphology is similar to the megaliths on Seine Island that are made up of porphyritic granite. Seine Island has two menhirs next to each other, which are referred to collectively as les causeurs, meaning the talkers. They stand at 2.3 meters and 2.8 meters in height. Since the TAF structures are larger than any ancient fish weirs to have been discovered so far in Brittany, the authors of the paper suggest two other possible functions. The first is that they started out as smaller fish traps, which were then continually added to over several centuries as the sea level rose. This would also explain why different kinds of architecture are used in TAF1. The YEG structures look much more like fish traps and were built higher up on the former foreshore, so were likely built later when the sea level was higher. A second idea is that they had a protective function, damping the swell coming from the north. This could also explain why TAF2 and TAF2B do not completely cut off the valley. The 50 meter wide gap between these structures is too big to have functioned as a sluice, but may have served as an entry point to the sheltered water behind the walls. Since no organic elements could be found on the surface of the structures, the researchers could not carry out radiocarbon testing. So, in order to date them, they analyzed relative sea level rise. The great depth of the walls means that they were initially constructed during the period when sea level rise was at its most rapid, so between 6000 and 5000 BCE. Construction dates for each feature were calculated based on their hypothesized function and are set out in this table. So this gives the earliest date of 5950 BCE for TAF1A if it functioned as a protective wall and the most recent date of 3650 BCE for YAG3C, which was likely a fish trap.
Since the structures are anchored to rocky outcrops, it's possible to calculate how long each of them was operational. The researchers did this by working out how the coastline changed, assuming that the tidal range had stayed roughly the same. They found that the TAF walls were likely in use for around 700 years. Researchers over the years have suggested that stone fish weirs represent a technical evolution during the transition from the Mesolithic to the Neolithic. These huge stone structures could only have been built and maintained over long periods of time by the collaboration of large groups of people, so imply that a sedentary lifestyle was already underway. Evidence for early Neolithic farmers in Brittany dates back to the beginning of the 5th millennium, and shell middens have been found there that date to the late Mesolithic. Some of these habitats were quite close to one another, so it's likely that Neolithic people arrived in the west of Brittany from the east and met the local hunter-gatherers at the end of the 6th millennium BCE. The authors of the paper discussed that the origin of megalithism in Brittany isn't really known. Some of the oldest megaliths are found in areas where both the early Neolithic farmers and the maritime hunter-gatherers met one another. It's possible, considering the size of the TAF structures, that the trend of building megalithic monuments emerged from Mesolithic groups. Perhaps these monuments played more of a practical role, just as the fish weirs and potential protective walls did, than has previously been understood. The authors also point out that in Brittany there is a legend which talks about the lost sunken city of East. This was supposedly located to the west of the Bay of Doranenez, which is 10 kilometers east of Seine Island. It could be that such legends are rooted in the memory of a time when sea level was lower, even if other elements of the story are much more fantastical. I mean, just look again at how much bigger Seine Island was just 8,000 years ago. It's quite reasonable that such significant changes to the local environment were commemorated in oral histories. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think about these structures in the comments and I'll see you next time.